Hey there, everybody. Welcome back. We need to keep going with Mean Streets. So, we visited four out of our five contacts so far. We've got a new one, Peter Dull, which was the insurance agent. But I think we're going to go to Steve Clements next, who is the... Um... What's the word I'm looking for? Detective on the case. That's what... <laughs> That's that's the word I was looking for. And we want to put in nav code four four six eight zero. I think that's the level. I'm gonna read my own writing. Alright. And away we go. So I checked the uh the volume levels and they're actually pretty good. So I'm glad about that. So we learned that Steve, or not Steve, Carl, did have a million dollar law uh, insurance settlement, but they didn't give it to his daughter because he committed suicide. But she was very upset about it, according to Dolores, who is Carl's fiance. We also learned that Carl was working on something that he didn't really want to talk about, but we don't know what that is yet. So far, we're doing really good at learning things. We have no idea what is what. So I wonder if Steve can give us any direction on where to go. I'm going to assume probably not. We can also talk to Peter, and we do have to go to Carl's apartment still. We may do that next, I think. I have it written down as Carl apartment Because I am... I'm witty. Still not sure whether I want to keep in these driving segments. Uh, Hello? I enter the West Precinct Station near the Bay Bridge. Walking down a narrow corridor, I see a number of posters in support of the Law and Order Political Party. Oh, I need to ask about that still. I forgot about that one. That one is on my list. I thought it just meant like, do you like Law and Order, the TV show? I find the Office of Police, Detective Steve Clements, and walk in. Clements greets me with his usual belligerency. What do you want, Seamus? He snarls. <laughs> Holy... Okay. <laughs> Alright, dude. You need... To... You need... You need to tone it back a little bit there, friend. Oh, 2033, everybody. Alright, so I guess we'll, we'll question. We'll ask him about... Uh... Carl Linsky as usual. Why? There we go. Why are you interested in him? <laughs> why, why did it come out like that? <clears throat> Oi, why are you interested in him? Oh, I get it. His daughter wasn't happy with our investigation. She's knocking the hell out of the cops over a simple suicide. Well, she's wasting your time and her money. We've got a witness named... Ooh. Ooh. Got to write down a new name. They got a witness. Ah. Ah. Named Bash. Good old Bash. Dang it. He was a witness. Who saw him jump off the bridge. He even left the suicide note. He hands me the copy. The note reads... Si oh, that's me. The note reads... Sylvia, I'm too tired and too sick of living. Please forgive me, Dad. How much more proof does that girl need? Um, let's ask him about Bash Daggett. 
I'm afraid the nicest thing I can say about Daggett is that he's the ultimate low-life scumbag. You'll find him past the mission district. Use now nah, is four six five seven. Interesting. Um, we'll ask him about Sylvia. She's Ed Strong and thinks she knows everything, but she's a good-looking dame. That's for sure. I've heard she's a bit frisky. So watch yourself. <laughs> all right, all right, friend. Okay, uh, what was Dolores's Dolores Light something? Okay. Uh, what was I didn't write down Dolores's last name. Uh, let, let me look up her last name real quick. Give me just a second. All right, it's the. Dolores Lightbody. Dolores, I never stood what Carl Linsky saw on her. If she were a building, she'd be condemned. Wow, you're rude, my friend. See if you know about Peter Dull. Can't help you there. Now, law and order. Let's see what he has to say. A lot of police officers think the law and order party is just what the city needs. But that outfit scares me. I don't think we're going to get much else out of him. Um, where do I want to go next? We can go to the apartment. We can go to <coughs> talk to Bash Daggett, Peter Dull. Um, well, the apartment's what I have written next. So why don't we just go there? So we're going to go to the nav computer. Nav computer. Um, should be 4660. Destination locked. And now let's just, let's go. Why are none of my key mark? Like, I have to hit them twice every time now for some reason. That's weird. So we learned that there was a witness, and we got a copy of the of the suicide note. That's the word I'm looking for. He's like, "Oh man, Julie dying." Wow, this didn't take long. Yeah, we'll exit. Oh, the three. The, th the, the three-story Queen Anne-style home of Professor Karolinski has been well kept. I step inside and notice the quaint style of furniture and decor. Oh, neat. Oh, we're walking around. Um, look to get to move open on off taste back. Oh. Look, get, move, over. Gotcha. We're going to look at the switch. Looks like a light switch. The standard oak and metal entry table with a fax machine. You scan the bookcase and see that nothing seems out of the... Oh, you scan the bookcase and nothing seems out of the ordinary. That's the narrator. The fax machine is operational. Um, can I? There we go. A fax. Dear Professor, looking forward to our date Saturday. Love, Sandra Larson. Hello. Hello. <clears throat> Let me write this down. I got to tear that piece of paper off. Sandra Larson. I guess we need to. We need to look her up. Um, Sandra Larson. Alrighty. He had a little, uh, poo nanny on the side. Um, all right. Back. Can we open? 
the bookcase. It's already open. Okay, nothing seems out of the ordinary. Okay, let's go back. <laughs> so this is an interesting way of having to look at things. Um, was that everything actually? Switch. What's the switch for? Oh, it looks like a light. Can we turn it on? Wow. It lit up everything so much. Um, can we take that? Oh, we took the message. Okay, so we can take the facts. All right, so we can take the facts. It's weird not having any music or anything here. Um, so, okay, so we can go back. Um, let's see if... Oh, oh, oh. What, what did we get? We have a bar and the whiskey. Um, look at the bar. The bar appears to be well stocked. There is a cabinet door. Cabinet door to the bar. Can we open it? Okay. There's a shoe box. A small shoe box is inside the cabinet. Can we open it? Okay. There's papers. Professor, I got the possible Nexus passwords to be decoded. Uh. What? That, that's, what is that? To be decoded, it's a, oh, we have to decode these, or I'm assuming. Okay, can we, can we take this? Can we take those? Cool, we took the papers, so. Um, the Jack Daniels whiskey bottle is half full. Can we, can we take the booze? If we can take the booze, we're just stealing everything from his, from his, uh, from his, uh, from his apartment. We're just, we're just, we're just stealing everything. All right, let's take more of a look around. Wait, what's this? Couch, coffee table, and plant. Oh, that is, okay, yeah. So let's look at the couch. The couch is an antique 1960s contemporary style. The coffee table is made of brushed aluminum. No, it's aluminum. <laughs> oh, we can look at more stuff. There's a note on the coffee table, okay. Can we... There, there we go. The chess set the chessboard is set up with all the pieces except one. A bishop is missing. The handwritten note says, I'm going to get you for failing me, Linsky. Ooh, ooh, who did we uh Who did we get mad? Can we take that note? Cool. We'll look at the plant. The miniature palm tree, a miniature malt palm tree. <laughs> So a mutated palm tree is set in the corner. All right. Um, what's this? We have a cabinet and a painting. Solid oak cabinet. The door, the door is oak with a small round knob. Can we open it? Okay. We have a book and cabinet key. A psychology textbook written by Carl Linsky. A page is marked. Um, can we take the book? Okay. I think we can just take everything. A file cabinet key. Like, I'm pretty sure we're going to need that. And let's look at the painting. The painting is an antique landscape. 
people used to buy these at Kmart. <laughs> so it's like a Walmart brand picture. Gotcha. I looked around his house, found a Walmart picture. I took it because I thought it was kind of cute. Well, okay, we've got a ton of things. An executive swivel chair. There's a desk key. <laughs> a small desk key's on the seat of the chair. Well, I guess we're probably going to need it. The display cabinet is protected by a magnetic field. You notice two slot screws partially hidden and surmise that if you could that you could shut down the field if you had a slot screwdriver. I assume we're going to need that. Inside the case is a historical artifact. The Maltese fruit cake, carbon dated as the oldest fruit cake in existence. It dates back to 16th century Europe. Nobody wanted to eat it then either. <laughs> Valued at $4,000. Let's look at the trash can. To cra the tr a trash can sits on the floor next to the desk. There's a lease and a note. The lease is for space in the Bridge View Warehouse located at the... Si oh boy. I gotta write this down now. So we've got the Bridge View Warehouse. Bridge View Warehouse. It's four six seven five. And it was rented by Linsky. Rented by Linsky. 10 year ago. All right, so we have another we're getting we're getting all sorts of things. The note is handwritten to Dolores Lightbody. It says, "Dolores, I'm calling our relationship off. It has nothing to do with Sandra Larson. I just know there are other whales in the <laughs> Oh, I just know there there are other whales in the sea and I oh wait Oh, that, that was it. Okay. Um, we go back. Okay, we have to look at the desk now. I'm sure we're going to have to use the desk key. Oh, no, 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 no. I didn't mean to... Went to look at the desk. A burst aluminum work desk. And desk... Side drawer. Can we open it? Okay. I thought that was like someone shooting me for a second there. Wait, did do we have an inventory? Because there a way I can look at an inventory. So we have a digital tape, which we're probably going to need for that digital recorder. A two-inch digital audio tape. Well, let's go ahead and take that. And a grade sheet. The grade sheet is for an advanced psychology course. The name of one student is circled. Blaze Ween. <laughs> Blaze Wiener. <laughs> All right. <sighs> Blaze Wiener, which is a psychology student. W I E N E R. Psych student got an E, which I'm sure is for exemplary work. Um, okay, so we have now we have the digital tape player. Looks like a modern digital audio tape player. Um, wait, could I? Don't. Look. Can I take the grade sheet? 
I'm just, we can take everything. All right, so now let's, do I take, do I like, do I take that? It's fat, it appears to be securely fastened down. Can I <clears throat> open it? You slip the tape you found at the desk into the tape player. The voice on the tape cries out, They're in my head! They're in my head! They're in my head! They're in my head! Cool! That was... I wasn't expecting that. Um... Um, okay... I don't think there's anything else we can do here. Is there anything else we can look at? Nope. Did we look at everything here? And we open this. And there's nothing else in it. Okay. Uh, is there a way to look at my inventory? So I know we're carrying some things. So there's nothing on the bookcase. Let me see if there's a way to open up my inventory real quick. Alright, so you can only look at your inventory when you're in your speeder, so good to know. Um, is there anything else we want to do? Couch, coffee table, and the plant. We don't need to do anything there. Can we move the couch? Do you want to hurt your back? Can we move the coffee table? Okay. I have to stay. Not gonna lie, kind of sick of sneezing today already. Oh, I've got a headache from sneezing so much. Um, back. I know there was the cabinet we could look at. I want to see something. See as we can move things. Can I move the cabinet? Okay. So that really doesn't do anything. Moving is just another way of looking. What about the painting? The heck? Behind the painting is a small wall safe. We open it. Okay. There's. Are we about to jack this dude's money? Inside the safe is a thousand dollars in cash. Can we take it? Okay. <laughs> Just... <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> we just jack the dude's money. <laughs> All right. Um... Uh, I think that's everything. Oh, I guess that's everything we can do here. Can we move the bar? Appears to be securely fastened down. Yeah, right, well, he <laughs> he walks so dumpy. So now we should be able to look at our inventory with eye. We have a message, a book, a key. What key was this? That was the file cabinet key. Did we ever use that? We have the combination. The safe co Oh! I'm guessing that's how we were able to look at the safe then. And then we have the papers. Okay. Oh! 
Well, that's king, rook, pawn. Bishop, queen. Uh, I don't know who that is. Um, is that an N or a W? No, or is that an H? King, rook, pawn. Castle, knight, black, white. Okay. I'm assuming once we find the the uh, the what did we need? It was like a bishop or something for that chess set. We go back there. And then we can do something with the chess set. But we've got a lot of leads. We still have Peter Dull, Bash, Daggett. We have to go Blaze Wiener. We still have to figure out who Sandra is. So let's go ahead and go to Peter Dull first since he's next on the list. And he's at 4 6. Seven four. Destination locked. So we'll go to Peter Dull, the insurance agent, and ask him about Carl. Um, I th he would know about Sylvia. We're getting a whole bunch of names. Maybe he would know about Sandra, too. So I wonder if Sandra is someone really important, or if it's just like, or like, did he have her on his his uh, list? I don't know. We'll find out. Peter Dole is the vice president of the Transamerica Insurance Company. Most insurance people aren't really exciting. But he's so boring, even looking at him could put you to sleep. He does look pretty boring. <laughs> Excuse me. We'll ask about my throat. We'll ask about Carl... Lin... not Linsky? Linsky. Mr. Linsky has taken an insurance policy out on himself in July. The amount of the policy was one million dollars, as you're certainly aware. There is a clause in life insurance policies that, in the event of a suicide, the policy is null and void. Alright, so what about Sylvia Linsky? Did I spell that right? Yeah, I did. What would he know about Dolores Lightbody? Dolores Lightbody. Dolores Lightbody, not only has she kept her girlish figure, she's doubled it. Aha, aha, aha. Sylvia. I don't know why I want to. Oh, I was spelling it wrong. Sylvia Linsky demanded that her father's insurance be paid, but the policy becomes void in case of suicide. I told her we were sorry, but nothing could be done. She screamed, We'll see about that, and stormed out of my office. Okay. I'm trying to think. Would he know anything else about... What does he know about law and order? I've heard of, I've heard of the name, but I don't know much about them. Not very political. Alright, well, we didn't get anything out of him. So when we come back, I guess we'll check out Peter, D not that was Peter Dull. We can check out Bash Daggett and Steve Blaze Wiener and then try to figure out who Sandra Larson is. Uh, yeah, it seems like we got a good plan. So we're slowly learning, learning the, the, 
the under the underworld yeah i don't know until then y'all take care and of course have a good one